Hello fellow doll artists, it's Carrie. Welcome to the second video in my new series, The Working Doll Artist Series, where I'll be doing a voiceover for some of my face-up speed paints while sharing some tips and insight based on my experiences becoming a full-time doll artist. This series of videos is intended to help new doll artists who are wanting to pursue a career, but may also provide a new perspective and some useful tips to more experienced artists. In my previous video from this series, I talked about how to find your doll art style, and I really enjoy conversations and comments, so I'd love to hear what you think of this topic and any other questions and topic ideas you have, so leave that in the comments. Today's video, I'll be repainting a Talkie Tina from the Twilight Zone. It was a commission for a customer who wanted my version of Talkie Tina in grayscale. So I used a Never After High doll and some bluish gray tones for the clothes and the skin. So today's topic comes from some comments on my last video that you would like to get some tips on how I make a living with doll repaints. Uh, first remember everyone's experience is different and we all like to focus on different things with our art so what works for me may not work for everyone but i'm sharing what i'm sharing is what i do to make a living in art and what works for me so before i jump into my top 10 tips for being a full-time doll artist i'll just share a little about my background so you can better understand my perspective so about two years ago, I had been at a corporate job for about 11 years and I was selling my doll art on the side for about seven years. And I had a decent sized following on social media, a, a nice customer base with a few regular collectors. Um, I never even considered doing this full time, but then my partner came up with this proposal that we sell everything, leave our jobs and hop in an RV, travel the country while I make my art. <laughs> so after a couple of years of me telling him he was crazy, I suddenly became sold on the idea somehow. I realized that with this plan, we could live on a much lower budget and fulfill a couple of our dreams all at once. So we had like a, you only live once, life is short motto, and we set a timeline stuck to it. We purchased a large RV with enough room in the back for me to have a little studio to do my doll work. And I even think I have a video tour of it. So if I do, I'll put a link to it in, in, or in the iCard. Um, but anyway, we followed through with our plan and we spent several months touring the Southeast uh, United States while I worked on my doll art in the back of the RV. We saw lots of sites and even did some out of state conventions and we totally enjoyed every moment until some of our um, family events brought us back home. But now we're on the path of our next adventure and but I'm still working full time with my art. So there's lots of ups and downs with as with most art careers, uh, but I can definitely say that it was the right decision to take this very scary leap that we did. So that's just a very short version of my journey into this career. And I'm sharing because I didn't want to give the impression that I'm just totally killing it and I hit the jackpot or something. I didn't just start selling so much that I had to quit my job. Instead, I adjusted how I was living to adapt to making less money. Art as a career takes a ton of discipline, many hours, like twice as many hours than I had used it with my corporate job, and a lot of hard work. I'm lucky that I love what I do, I have a supportive partner, and not having children helps with my flexibility. So this doesn't mean you couldn't make it work in your own way. I just want to be transparent about why and how it's working for me. Okay, so if you're still with me, I'll jump into my top 10 tips for being a full-time doll artist. So number one, have various streams of income. Income as an artist can be very unpredictable, so it's important to have some alternative income sources for the slow times. My main source of income is my commission work, but I also kind of supplement it with teaching classes, doing conventions, selling my mixed media art, and Patreon. Also, if commissions aren't coming in, I start making original collections so I don't waste time waiting for the next orders to pop up. I should mention I don't make enough hair on YouTube at this time for me to consider it one of my income sources, but if you're willing to put in the time and effort, it could be some added income for you. So think out of the box and make a plan for what you could do on the side, aside from making dolls. Number two, consider doing commissions. I know a lot of us don't like doing commissions. As artists, we like to create what inspires us and can find it hard to create someone else's vision. Commissions are also very challenging because you have a customer expectation to meet. 
but I told myself very early on that this is a job and sometimes with jobs you have to do work that isn't exactly what you would choose to do. So most of my work is commission work. I keep a waiting list when I can't fit in all the requests and rarely turn down commissions. I would only turn down commissions if it was something I felt I couldn't do well enough for the customer's expectation, if it didn't fit my style, or if I didn't feel comfortable with the request for some other reason. There are a lot of people out there who would love to have a specific doll they've always dreamed of, so you may want to consider opening the door to doing commissions, especially if your originals aren't selling very fast. You can also take breaks from commissions to do your own thing once in a while too. It's also worth, worth mentioning that some of my commissions have been my most rewarding work. I learn a lot from them and working on them has helped me improve. Number three, consider accepting payment plans. You'll likely have more sales if the customers can fit it more easily into their budget. I accept payment plans up to three or four months depending on the price of the doll. Make sure to have payment plan terms set up so that the customer knows what to expect when they request make, to make payments. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, I shared my payment plan terms along with some tips for, the, for one of last month's rewards. Number four, be organized and professional. Do all the adult stuff. You'll need a business license and a budget. You'll need to do taxes. You should have terms of service for commissions and payment plans and even write a business plan. Having everything formally written out will help you navigate potential difficult conversations with customers. Like I mentioned, if you're a supporter of on Patreon, I have shared both my commission terms of service and my payment plan terms, as well as some tips and need to know info about both in the reward library. But while you're doing all this adult stuff, don't forget to have fun. The reason you want to do this and want this to be your career is because you enjoy it, right? So don't let all the business stuff ruin that for you. Of course, don't ignore the business stuff either. Being organized and having everything written out will ease the stress and let you enjoy the process. Number five, keep a mailing list of your customers so you can send out emails to notify them of new products and when you have commissions opening. Save the emails for your customers and put out a mailing list sign-up sheet when you do conventions or doll shows. Number six, be kind, professional, ethical, fair, and responsive to your customers. If they don't have a good experience, they won't want to collect your work, nor will they recommend you to others. This doesn't mean you have to do everything they ask, but you can be polite while being firm. Be as accommodating as you can while protecting your interests with your policies and terms of service. So number seven, this is a big one. Set the right prices. It's important to account for all your supplies and your time. You wanna be fair to your customers, but also to yourself. If you can only manage to make $1 a month, but only charge $150, for example, that's not a fair wage for a month work. <laughs> Track how many hours it takes you to do each step and how much you think your time is worth. You'll want to have a pricing plan in place to make sure you're being fair and consistent with your pricing. You don't need to share the method with the customers because your prices should increase over time as you improve, but having the method ensures you're being ethical and not cheating yourself or the customer. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to go more in depth with this in a future video. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, this is another reward I've shared in the reward library with an in-depth system that I use to price my dolls, along with a learning module on how to pay yourself a fair wage. Number eight, network. Once things are better and we don't have to social distance like this, I recommend getting out there in person when you can show your work. You can do doll shows, comic conventions, or craft shows. Think out of the box. I like to do comic and horror conventions, but just a heads up that I don't sell a lot at these shows. I do them mainly because it's something my partner and I enjoy doing together, but they are still worthwhile because I've gotten several follow-up commissions and have made lots of connections. Try scoping out the shows you may be interested in and prior to committing to a booth. Let me know if you'd like me to share more about conventions and shows in a future video. Number nine. Consider yourself an artist. What I mean by this is sometimes people forget that being a doll artist is actually being an artist. There are a lot of tips out there on how to be a full-time artist. Our craft is unique, so some of the tips don't quite fit. For example, all of our work is one of a kind and we can't make prints or mass produce our work, but there's still lots of artist business tips that apply to doll artists too. 
So listen to artists' podcasts, or watch YouTube videos, or search the internet for artist vlogs, and soak up all that knowledge. Number 10, organize your time. I'm still working on this myself, but I start with a planner and lay out weekly goals and stick to them the best that I can. Being an artist is essentially owning your own business, so it's a must that you work efficiently. Schedule out your weeks and be sure to book some time for self-care and fun. So there's a lot more I could share, but these are my top 10. Remember, you don't have to follow someone else's plan. You're a unique individual and your art is your own. So how your business will run will be your own as well. Just because these tips and techniques work for me doesn't mean they will work for you and what you want your career to look like. The important thing is to have a plan and the plan may evolve, but laying it out on paper will give you the direction to get started. I hope you found all this information helpful. If you have any questions or requests for future topics in this series, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up so I'll know you want to see more like it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!